Motivation. You either have it or you don't. Not so simple. It's, it's much more complex, and that's why we see athletes and people motivated one day, not so many motivated the next. Or you go on a streak where you're going well with things, and then you might start getting a rut and, and, and the routine gets hard. So today in this video, I'm Dr. Cassie Price. I'm going to explain why all this is happening. There's so many different factors, um, particularly in today's, today's society. So there's two big things off the bat to understand, you know, what is affecting our motivation, um, and particularly in today's age. One is your habits, and two is your environment that's influencing your habits. So we'll get into, you know, how you can build habits that will keep you and staying motivated and, and how you be aware of that, and obviously the environment that's important to be aware of as well. But before we do that, I want to tackle two big areas to understand why motivation can be, you know, blocked or we get like, you know, thrown off from what we feel is, you know, I want to be doing this, I want to do this, but then we might not feel that motivation day in, day out, and why it can flutter or, or, you know, dissipate, and therefore not stick to the habits that we want to. So that is understanding dopamine, okay, and I'll get into that in a second. And secondly, also understanding like the fear of change and doing uncomfortable things. So first let's tackle the dopamine one, because this is so big today with phones, with social media, with TV. It's so easy to get things that give us pleasure, right? And when you think of motivation, we're easily motivated by pleasure, right? Oh, cookie, like huh, I want to eat it, right? And um, or ice cream. And so we got this reward pleasure system that motivates us and it gives us a dopamine hit or, or the concept is just like it's a juice of you know, and a feeling in our body, these, these chemicals, that's like, yes, success, right? And if you think in sport, when you like score a goal or you win a game or you, you know, get the outcome you want, there's this <clears throat> rush of, yeah, I was successful. This is, this is great. And so, you know, that's obviously usually a little stronger than um, getting a text message on your phone or Snapchat or likes on Instagram, or when you're looking at other people and watching funny videos or watching a TV show. It's obviously not the same, but think of it this way, which is way more accessible, the stuff on your phone and on TV. And so the more you're doing these things is you're getting those little successes and joys and wins that are pleasure based. And that can actually then lead you to like, well, I'm satisfied. I've got all these little pleasures and, and, and benefits. And then you're going to lose out on what's actually the more meaningful motivation, which is about enjoyment and, and pursuing something of meaning. And so, you know, pursuing your goals and your workouts and your nutrition and your training. And so this can kind of, you know, get depleted because we're getting filled too much with this. So that's, that's the first concept to just understand that we're sometimes getting too much information and dopamine and too much, you know, clicks and likes and easy things to do that it's like we're not doing the things that are actually more meaningful. And so it's the difference in understanding between, you know, these things are pleasure but this is actually true enjoyment. And there's a clear distinction there. So make sure you understand that. And then the second big thing that I wanted to, to tackle from you know, understanding where motivation comes from in these, in these concepts is also fear. And so fear can be a very big obstacle to staying and being motivated, right? You might, you know, theoretically and in your mind, you're like, okay, I really want you know, to eat healthy and do these things. But we often get afraid to do things differently right? We're, we're often stay, you know, um, scared in a way. And so we stay in our comfort zone and we don't push ourselves and we don't take action. And therefore, you know, we're saying things or we might try a little bit, but we don't want to fully commit. And we often have commitment problems. And so the way to think of this is just having the courage, right? Taking the risk to go out and do something different, to push your uh, comfort zone. And again, when you think of doing that, that's not getting immediate pleasure, Okay. And what you are getting is long-term joy and, and learning and growth. And so, which is more meaningful. And so there's these two reward systems, but one is external, um, like eating the donut or doing the unhealthy things or not the best things. And the other is more internal, which is true enjoyment and, and growth focused. So that is a really important distinction. And when you think of, you know, fear, it's, you know, fear often keeps us over here. Right now, the last thing I'll, I'll give you haven't heard of this study before. It's the uh, marshmallow study. It just looks at uh, it was like four or five year olds, young kids, 
and they were given a marshmallow put in front of them. And they said, if you don't eat this marshmallow for the next two minutes, you'll get two, right? So delayed gratification, right? You'll get benefits later. So it's not in, in, inherently intrinsic motivation, um, but the concept is a lot of kids would just eat the, <laughs> like, oh, screw it, I'll just, don't want the delayed gratification, the more meaningful getting two, this is an easy win um, in a way they just eat the first one versus the ones that are able to, you know, to tear and not fall into the pleasure and, you know, do other things. And then they get the double when they looked at those kids down in life, they're way more successful. And this concept of delayed gratification, not falling into um, just the quick immediate pleasures and seeing and also building habits and environment that fosters these becomes really important. And so that's what I want to then get into today. <clears throat> Let's see, let me get some water here. Get into today related to your environment and therefore your habits. So as you can probably allude to, what's one of the big environmental issues to motivation right now? It's phones. Right? I got athletes and, and we work with and I'm on a group call as an individual. Like how much are you on your phone? What apps are you using? You can easily pull it up. You can check, oh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. How many hours a day per week? and go and look at those numbers. And if, if you're not willing to, that probably means you know they're not great. And I bet for most of, most of you out there, you think you're on your phone less than you are, right? I have athletes like, oh yeah, no, I'm not on Snapchat that much. They're like, oh, it's two hours a day I'm on Snapchat? And they're like, you know, that is a lot of time, right? To be on Snapchat a day. And that's like constant, they get little dopamines, pleasure, things. It doesn't mean Snapchat's bad. It's not like, don't go on any of these, you know, phone and, and use these things, but be aware of how you're using them and be aware of how that might, A, one, you're just overall productivity and doing things that are more maybe meaningful and to the values that you have, but then also then to the motivation to do that. Okay. Because it can actually start draining on you. So that's one area. And then it's also when and where you're, how you're using it. So that's kind of starting to leak into the habits part, which is if you're using, you know, um, you know, watching TV or you're doing, um, going on your phone early in the day uh, or you're having late starts and you're trying to do the things that are meaningful later in the day and do these things that are pleasurable earlier. Well, it's like, you're just instantly, it's just, you know, it's backwards, right? You're just less likely to want to do these things because you've been, you put all your energy first and you're getting all this dopamine and reward right away from doing the easy things. No, do these harder and more meaningful things first, right? A classic example is coming home from, uh, school and then it's like oh, I'm gonna watch TV first and you know watch TV pleasure and then do homework you usually doesn't work that well right it's like oh, I'll watch a little show and a little longer then oh, I gotta find something else to do another excuse come home and do your homework right away get it done and then watch your TV or do your social activities and, and leisure activities and so these two concepts combine which is environment right? The things that we have around us, you know, learning to put our phone away, put it on silent, not get notifications all the time, put limits on your phone. These things that can change our environment, um, as well as then building the habits when and where and how we do things can keep us motivated, right? You see athletes all the time. I want to train consistently hard and do all these things. Like there's so many little things to become an elite athlete. It takes a lot of discipline and habits. And some of those habits can be hard to build especially if you're trying to build them in the wrong context or at the wrong time or in the wrong way. So find ways and be self-reflective, you know, you can shoot us a message um, and we can help with that too, but be aware of, you know, these factors and how that influences your motivation because there are athletes that are highly motivated, but then get sucked into, you know, these easy pleasurable things and that can really throw you off. So I hope that was helpful. If you're interested in all learning more, you know, click the links below, check out our website and, and other social media platforms. We'd love to hear any questions or comments. Make sure you also subscribe. See you in the next video.